Hi there, this is Adrian from tacticalprojectmanager.com. In this video, we're going to talk about project stakeholder analysis. What is a project stakeholder analysis and how do you perform the analysis? And finally, how can you make sure that you don't forget any important stakeholder in your project? So what is a project stakeholder analysis? It's a structured process that you perform at the beginning of your project. And the purpose is to find out who is going to be affected by the project so that you can include them in the communication and in the daily business. And affected sounds very general and there are three categories uh, you can use. First of all, everyone who is working on your project is naturally a stakeholder. So your project team, but also external contractors that you may have involved in the project. Number two, people and teams who are somehow feeling the change uh, that comes with the project. They are also your stakeholders. A simple example, you're rolling out a new software in your company and the end users are going to feel the change. So one day in the morning they come to their computer and there's going to be a new software. So they need to be trained or they need to be at least informed that something has changed. Otherwise, they will be very upset. The third category, these are the so-called approvers. So people or departments who have a saying in what you do, who, who have to approve your actions. Let's take an example. You are setting up a new shop in, the, in town, a restaurant maybe. And you need to get approval by the local authority that you can open this shop. If you don't do it, well, it can happen that you have to stop your activities and wait until you get the approval from the authorities. So the, the local authorities are in this case also a stakeholder. But this can also be internal um, or units. For example, if you plan to work on the weekend with your team, you need to get approval from HR. So uh, HR is a stakeholder that you need to inform, communicate with and get their approval on. This is what I call a process analysis. And what it is, is you want to find out how people and information and data are being sent around and shared between departments. Um, because that way you can find out who you need to include. So let's take an example. Let's say you're working for a company which builds large machines and you have a department, the engineering team who is designing these machines on the computer. And in the project, we want to replace their software with some newer version, whatever. So the way I would carry out a process analysis here is I would meet with these guys. I would ask them, you know, what is your process? Tell me from, from start to finish. What is it like? You know, who do you work with? What kind of information do you share and with whom? So they would come up with some feedback like first we get a requirement specification in, in Word from, I don't know, some product development department and then we create the first drawing on the computer. We send it to our to the quality department who checks then again does a, does a machine meet the standards and the certification criteria. And once it's approved, we carry on, we build a prototype. And in some cases we are too busy, we, are, we don't have capacity. In those cases we hire an external service provider who builds the machine prototype for us. And then afterwards, once we're done with the prototype, the, we start building the machine and uh, we also share the data with the marketing department who then builds product brochures and the technical specification sheets, whatever. So that's the process. And just by asking these questions, we get a, get a sense of who else we need to include. So remember, purpose of this sample project was a new software to be introduced in the engineering department. And we could have just focused on this team, but this would not cover the entire scope of stakeholders. So we also learned that there's a quality team involved uh, that they're dealing with. So they may be also using the software. So we may have to include them in the project. Second, 
there's the marketing team who who's using the data who might also need access to the software they need to be trained and we need to check their interfaces for example and thirdly there's the external service provider who is building the prototype so for sure they also have some uh, data exchange and they need they, they are using the software and we need to make sure it's you know compatible with their software so that the process can uh, can be carried out successfully so this is very valuable information and then we would continue like setting up meetings with these other stakeholders marketing the service provider and the quality department and, and ask them you know what's your process and and this way you know you expand the view and you 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 understand who in addition you need to involve in the project and this is great because let's say you are in the middle of the project and you didn't know that there was some external service provider you need to involve you know this would be a, a big a big um, disaster because you have, we would have to build up an interface on short term basis and that's not something you want the second strategy the second strategy I use for identifying stakeholders, I don't have a fancy name for it, but basically I look at things and objects and tools that are being used in the process that my project is about. So to, to go back to our example, the software update project for the engineering department. Uh, so far, we only relied on information we got by talking to people. And this is great, but as is usually the case, you don't get the entire view because uh, the colleagues from the engineering, they may not be aware of everything and everybody they are working with. So we might lose out on some important stakeholders. And what I would do in this case, I would go to the IT department and say, hey, uh, please give me a list of all the user accounts on this software that we, got, that we are planning to replace. A download so I can go through it and see who is in engineering who is in marketing and who's in the other departments and this way I can find out which other organizational units are are using the software that we that I was not aware of and this is a great way of you know closing this gap this 5% or 1% of stakeholders that you miss if you don't uh, have this complete overview yeah. The final tip I have for you around identifying your stakeholders is this one. At the start of your project, create some noise about it. Let everyone in the organization know that there's this big project coming up. Make it very clear what it's about and when it's going to start. Everybody in your organization should know about it because this way you can get feedback. People will read about your project in a newsletter or in a um, presentation that you're giving in a meeting and they will think, you know, oh, does that somehow affect my processes, my team, my department? And they will get back to you. And this way you make sure that everyone knows about it and that you don't forget any important stakeholders, which is the goal of a successful stakeholder analysis. If this was helpful for you, make sure you hit subscribe on the button below and visit tacticalprojectmanager.com for updates and tips on managing projects successfully.